Okay, I'm back. We're really going to do the remaining portion of the review. So in the first video, I worked on problems 1 through 16. And so now we're going to work on 17 through 32. So here goes. Number 17. It says 5x plus 3 equals 22, the absolute value. So look, let's go look over here. I did see one that said absolute. OK, so steps to solving an absolute value equation. It says, first, isolate the absolute value expression. There should be no coefficient either. But if you look at my paper, I already have the absolute value by itself, and there's no coefficient. OK, then it says, apply the appropriate case rule for when you have the expression inside your absolute value bars equal to A, OK? If A is a positive number or another expression, you're going to do these steps. If the A equals zero, right? If there's a zero over here on this side, then you're going to do these steps. And if the number on the right-hand side is a negative number, you're going to say it's no solution, OK? So we do have a positive 22. So I am going to do what they say. It says set the expression inside the absolute value bars equal to A, and also set the expression inside the absolute value bars equal to the opposite of A, OK? So I'm going to take just what's inside the bars and equal it to 22. And I'm also going to take what's inside the bars equal to negative 22. And then I'm just going to solve those resulting equations. So they're linear, both of them. So I'm going to minus 3 on both sides. And then I'm going to divide by 5 on both sides. Here I'm going to do the same exact thing. And so then I just need to check both of my answers. So let's go ahead. In the calculator, you can go, um, I think there's a way to do it in your calculator. I don't know that I have a way to do it on this calculator. I think on yours, you would hit like math. So I'm not going to be able to do it here. So I'm just going to do it by hand. So let me check. 5 times 19 over 5 plus 3. And then over here, 5 times negative 5 plus 3. So the 5s would cancel, and I'd end up with 19 plus 3, which would give me 22 in the bars. And the absolute value of 22 is, in fact, 22. So the 19 over 5 does check out. Here, same thing, that would be negative 25 plus 3, which is a negative 22. And the absolute value of negative 22 is also positive 22. So both of these answers are my solutions. I'm going to go to the test, and I'm going to type in both of those. OK, number 18. Now I am going to need another page, so I'm going to turn over to the next page. So this is still case one. Case one said that the number could be positive, or if you had another expression on the right, it's still case one. So how do I do it when there's an expression? You're going to take the expression inside the bars equal to this expression exactly as it is. And then you're also going to take the expression inside the bars as is equal to the opposite of this expression, the whole expression. So notice I had to put the whole thing in parentheses when I did the opposite. Now here, this is a quadratic. So I'm actually going to minus 2x and minus 14. So I get 0 over here. And this is x squared plus 5x minus 14. That is pretty easy to factor. 
And so then I get x equal to negative seven and x equal to positive two, okay? Over here, I have to actually distribute this negative first. So I get negative two x and negative 14. So in order to move them both over, I'm actually gonna have to add them both. So I get nothing on the right-hand side and on the left-hand side, I get x squared plus nine x plus 14. And again, this one is pretty easy to factor as well. And so I get x equal to negative seven and then a negative two. And so then my solutions are obviously negative seven, two, and negative two. Now I don't know which of those work, so I need to check. Absolute value of negative seven squared plus seven times negative seven equal to two times negative seven plus 14. So I get 49 minus 49 equal to negative 14 plus 14. I end up with zero in the bars and zero on the right-hand side. And that is true. The absolute value of zero is zero. Now I'm gonna plug in two. So two squared plus seven times two equals two times two plus 14. I get four plus 14. I get four plus 14. So I get the absolute value of 18 equals 18. And that is a true statement. Finally, I'm gonna plug in the last. So negative two squared, seven times negative two, two times negative two plus 14. I get four minus 14 equal to negative four plus 14. I get the absolute value of negative 10 equal to a positive 10, which is also true. So that means all three of them are my solutions. So negative seven, two and negative two. Okay, number 19. Number 19 is 24x squared minus 26x plus five equal to zero. And in this one, I don't have a choice. It literally says use the quadratic formula to solve it. So I'm not doing it because I think it's easy and convenient to use. I'm doing it because I have to do it on this problem. So I'm going to go straight in. Let me see. A is positive 24. B is negative 26. And C is 5. So X will equal, and again, this middle expression is what I use here negative of b plus or minus b squared minus four times a times c all over two times a. So I get positive 26 plus or minus the square root of something. One ninety six over forty eight. Yep. And then does the square root of one ninety six simplify? It does. It simplifies to fourteen. So that means I have twenty six plus fourteen over forty eight, and I have twenty six minus fourteen over forty eight. Oops, 26 plus 14 is 40. And then 26 minus 14 is 12. So then x equals 5 over 6 and 12 over 48, 1 fourth. And so those are the two solutions I found. Um, you can check them if you want, but I normally don't check them when it comes to polynomials. So 24 parentheses fraction five over, oops, over six, close it, square it, minus 26 parentheses fraction five over six, close it, plus five. When I hit enter, I should get zero. 
and I do. So five over six is good. Now I'm gonna copy this, go to the front, and I'm gonna change this to one over four. And then I'm gonna change the other one to one over four. And I also get zero. So both of them are my solutions. Okay, number 20. Here we have x squared plus 8x minus 8 equal to 0. And so it's already in its general form. I'm just going to pick out the a, b, and c. a is an invisible 1 here. b is a positive 8. And c is a negative 8. Now, just FYI, I did mention this in the class, but um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the video for the online class. You can never have X's in your A, B, and C. A, B, and C are just numbers, okay? So when you start plugging things into your quadratic formula, if you've got X's in there, it's wrong, okay? You're only supposed to have numbers in that quadratic formula. You do have the X over here, but in the formula part, there should be no x's. It should just all be numbers. So negative of b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And so I'm just going to plug in. b is 8, 8, a is 1, c is negative 8, and a is 1. So we do the pieces. This is negative 8. This is ninety six and two. Square root of ninety six is four. Square root of six. And as long as you don't have imaginaries, you should be able to use your calculator for this. So fraction negative eight plus four square root of 6 over 2. It will simplify for it. So 2 square root of 6 with a minus 4 outside the house. And now I'm going to do the same thing again, but with the minus in the middle, because 1 is plus and 1 is negative. And I get negative 2 square root of 6 minus 4. It just simplifies the whole thing for me. Okay. So I'm going to type in both of those. 2 radical six, get out of the house, minus four, comma, oops, negative two, radical six, get out of the house, minus four. Okay, moving along. We've got one, two, three, four, five of these things using the quadratic formula. So let's just keep going. So I'm not saying anything here. Um, I'm just plugging everything in. So I have 8x squared plus 40x plus 50 equal to 0. a is equal to 8. b is equal to 40. c is equal to 50. So I'm plugging it into the quadratic formula. x equals negative b value 40 plus or minus the square root of the b value squared, so 40 squared, minus 4 times 8 times 50 the whole thing over two times eight, which is 16. So now I'm gonna simplify it in pieces. I get negative 40 plus or minus the square root of 40 squared minus four times eight times 50 is zero over two times eight, which is 16. The square root of zero is zero. So it doesn't matter whether I add zero or whether I subtract zero, I'm going to get negative 40. And so negative 40 over 16 does reduce to negative 5 halves. 
And so I'm going to type in negative 5 over 2. Move it up. We're going to do now 22. So in 22, we have x squared plus 8x plus 17 equal to 0. So here a is equal to 1, b is equal to 8, c is equal to 17. So quadratic formula, x is equal to negative of 8 plus or minus the 8 squared, square root of the 8 squared minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a. So we get negative 8 plus or minus the square root over 2. 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 17. I get negative 4. Now, we know that negatives, we cannot do the square root of negatives. So this negative will come out of the house as an i. So that means that my expression will look like this with an i on the side. Now, I can actually do the square root of 4, which is actually just 2 and the i on the side. And anytime you have complex numbers as your answers, i's, imaginaries as your answers, you do have to split the fraction and you also want to put the i on the side of the second fraction so the i will go there. And then you can reduce the fractions individually. So this becomes negative 4 and that just becomes 1 which can be simply written as negative four plus or minus i. Now it wants me to type in my answers separated with a comma. So it's gonna be negative four plus i and then negative four minus i. Okay, moving on to 23. Now you won't have so many of them on the test, maybe one or two, but you definitely need to have um, enough examples for all the different kinds of answers that could possibly happen, right? Um, so here's another quadratic formula. So A is equal to 4, B is equal to 16, and C is equal to 17. So that means X is going to equal negative of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So we get negative 16 plus or minus the square root of something over 8. 16 squared minus 4 times 4 times 17 is a negative 16. So the same situation as before, this negative will come out as an i. So this is negative 16 plus or minus square root of 16 with an i. There is a square root of 16, it's just 4. So this is 4i. And then we can split the fraction with i on the side and simplify each of these. So this becomes negative 2 plus or minus 1 half i. And if I have to type them separated, it's going to be negative 2 plus 1 half i and negative 2 minus 1 half i. Okay. Now we'll move on to number 24. So we have 4x squared plus 16x plus 21 equal to 0. So a is equal to 4, b is equal to 16, and c is equal to 21. So x is equal to negative of b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. We get negative 16 plus or minus the square root of something over 8. Let's see what the something is. 16 squared minus 4 times 4 times 21 is negative 80. So the negative will come out of the house as an i.
And the square root of 80 is not perfect, but it does simplify. So we get four square root of five with the i all over um, eight. Now we do know because of the i, we have to separate this. So negative 16 over eight plus or minus four square root of five over eight with the i on the side. Negative 16 over eight does simplify to negative two, but four square root of five, oh clear, fraction. Four square root of five over eight simplifies into the square root of five over two with the I on the side. So if I have to separate my answers into two, it's gonna be negative two plus square root of five over two I and negative two minus the square root of five over two i. So don't think that you cannot get a radical with a um, imaginary solution. It can happen. Okay. Now number 25, um, 25. Now I'm not gonna do 25 all the way because um, because it's not red, nothing in that problem is red. So if I do the problem, I'm doing yours for you, okay? I will let you know that you have two choices on what you can do. The first thing you can do is see if that's a nice decimal, three over two. Let me hit the double arrow to get my decimal. So there's my double arrow. It is a nice decimal. As long as it's a nice decimal, you can change it to a decimal and then just use the quadratic formula with A equal to 1.5, B equal to negative six, and C equal to nine. And I will leave you to do that, okay? Or you could notice that that's the only fraction. So to get rid of that fraction, you would have to multiply everybody by the common factor or the common denominator, which is gonna cause the twos to cancel there and result in three X squared minus 12 X plus 18 equal to zero. And then you can do the quadratic formula here with A equal to three, b equal to negative 12 and c equal to 18. Both of these are going to result in the same solution. You just pick which one you want to put into the quadratic formula, okay? But I'm not going to do it because I don't want to give you those answers since I will literally be doing the problem for you, okay? But at least you have some game plans on what to do. Now, we get into 26. So this is an absolute value inequality. And I do have the rules for the absolute value inequalities down here in our paper. So when you have an absolute value inequality, you have to look at the symbol and the number, okay? And it, notice that it says the number's positive. So when you see, if you see a negative over here, don't worry about it. Um, they should always be positive. Now, let's see. I guess you would have to think about it. If it had a less than and a negative, you know that's never gonna happen. Um, if that were less than and this were negative, this is an absolute value bar, which means it's gonna be a positive number. And positive numbers are never less than a negative. So in that case, you know it would be um, no solution, okay? But since it is a positive number, I'm gonna follow exactly what it tells me to do. It tells me to change that number to a negative on this side, then put whatever was in the bars in the middle, and then put that positive three on the right-hand side. And now I have this double inequality, which I must solve. So if I cover this up, in order to get rid x by itself, I would be multiplying um, both sides of my equation by three. And that would get me x all by itself. 
okay? But I have to remember that there's another part to this inequality, so I also have to multiply this one by three, resulting in negative nine, okay? And then in order for me to put that into an interval, because I think it wants an interval. Oh, no, it doesn't. So I ended up with not none of these answers. Oh, I wrote down the wrong number. Notice I wrote down three. And over there on number 26, it says four. That will change things a bit. I do still have to put the opposite sign and then the number itself. But when I multiply them by three now, they're gonna be 12 and negative 12. So I actually do have this answer. And so how do I graph it? Notice that there's no equal bars in my inequalities. So I'm gonna use this um, parentheses. So parentheses on the negative 12 here. It won't let me put, no, stop that, undo. I think I have to put the open circles. Open circles apply. I am not sure why it won't, oh, I just have to click it and then click on the negative 12, there it goes and then click the other one and click on the positive 12. And it looks like this one's off a little bit. So let me erase that and try again. There it goes. And so that's the answer. X is between negative 12 and 12. I do think I need to draw the line solid. So I grab the pencil and then I just clicked in the middle. Okay, now that should be good. This was the one I was talking about. This one is automatically no solution, okay? 27 is automatically no solution. We know that when you take the absolute value of something, no matter what's in there, it's gonna come out as a positive number. And a positive number is never going to be less than a negative number. Positive numbers are bigger than negative numbers. And so that's why this one is no solution. And when it's no solution, you just click right here at the bottom of the graph, no solution. Um, you don't have anything that you can graph. Now let's look at 28. So we have the absolute value of three minus five X greater than or equal to seven. So let's go back to our sheet. We have greater than or equal. So we have to set it up into these two different um, equations. I'm gonna leave my paper because I can still see this at the bottom. So I'm gonna take the expression three minus five X without the bars and do less than or equal to the opposite of this, which is negative seven. Write the word or, then the expression again without the bars, greater than or equal to that number exactly. Okay, and then I've got to solve these two equations. So let's see, it's linear. So I'm gonna minus three. I get negative 10 and I'm gonna divide by negative five. I get X and positive two, but notice here, it says here, if I multiply and division is multiplication, it's just multiplying by the reciprocal, okay? So if I multiply or divide by a negative number, notice it says right there for C less than zero. So if my number that I'm multiplying on both sides the number that I'm dividing on both sides is negative, I have to reverse my inequality symbol. So when I divided by this negative, I have to remember to flip that over, okay? Now I'm gonna go solve the other equation. So again, I divided by a negative, I have to flip this over. And now before I can tell you the answer, um, actually, I think we already have it, right? We have X, oh no, we don't. Yes, we do. We have X is less than, see X is less than negative four fifths. And that's exactly what I have here. And then the other one says X is greater than two. And that's exactly what we have right here. So I'm gonna select that option. And now let's see, or means to put both of these uh, graphs onto one number line. So X is less than four fifths and there's a bar. So I'm gonna use a bracket. Um, four fifths is a little bit, 
it's almost negative one. It's about right there. That might not be exactly correct, but it's about right there. And then less than would mean everything on this left-hand side. Now, positive two is this way. And x greater than two means that I would be talking about all the numbers to the right of two. So now we have number 29. So we have this one and it wants us to do the same thing. Okay, now before I can begin, I do have to get this bars part by itself. So I am gonna add this three over. That has to be done before you can figure out which case you have. And how do I know that? Because if you look at all these options, one, two, three, and four, none of them have a number outside of that those bars anywhere. Okay, so I do have less than a number. So it's case one again. So I'm gonna turn it into that uh, double inequality. So take the opposite of that number less than the expression without the bars less than this number as it is. There it is, so I was trying to find. And so it's a triple. I'm going to cover this. The first thing I need to do to solve a linear equation is move over the constant. I just have to make sure I move it here too. Then that will go away. I get negative 2x in the middle. I get negative 6 and I get negative 10. Okay. Then I'm going to divide by negative 2. When I do that, I'm going to get 8x and 3. Now, because I divided by negatives, I am going to have to flip these symbols over, OK? So I flipped the symbols over. However, this is not formal. The arrow should always be pointing to the left. So if I want them to point to the left, I'm basically going to swap the 8 and the 3 and then see how it's pointing to the 3. It will continue to be pointing to the 3. This one's pointing to the X. So in between these guys, it will point to the X. And coincidentally enough, when I reverse that, it is facing in the correct direction. And so this is the answer. And that is one of my options. Um, oh gosh, how'd they get five? Oh, because I'm a dork. Um, negative 10 divided by negative two is a positive five. So when I swapped it, this should have been a positive five. So we do have this one. And then how do I graph that? That's going to be everything between three and five. So let's mark three, and then let's mark five, and then we'll shade in between those two. OK, getting there, getting there. We got three more to go. So now 30 says to solve x squared less than or equal to 0, or less than or equal to 9. Now this is not a linear. This is a quadratic, OK? When you have a quadratic, you have to follow this process. It says um, find all the zeros of the polynomial, arrange it in increasing order from least to greatest, and then you're going to get those. The zeros are going to be the key numbers. You're going to use the key numbers to break it up into intervals, and then you're going to test the next value in each interval. Okay. So I do have to have this equal to zero in order to find the quote unquote zeros. So I'm going to minus nine on both sides. So I get that zero. And then essentially what I'm doing is I'm basically solving this equation to find zeros or to find the key numbers which they call zeros. It's not the number zero. It's just the word that they use to describe those key numbers, OK? Later, when we get into polynomial stuff, that word zeros will come back, OK? Um, but for here, in order for me to solve this, I could do it two ways. I could factor it, or I can do um, extracting roots. So if I add 9 to the other side, 
and then I take the square root of both sides, I'm going to get plus or minus over here. And then the square root of nine is actually three. So I get the two solutions, negative three and three. So negative three would be on the left and three would be on the right. Now what has happened is that you've created three sections. So this section is the interval negative infinity to negative three. And because there's a bar there, it's gonna have a bracket. Then the middle is negative three to three brackets. And then the right-hand side is three to positive infinity. Infinities always get parentheses, never brackets, okay? Um, essentially, the only thing that gets brackets is numbers, not infinity, but numbers, regular numbers, when there's a bar, okay? Everything else gets parentheses. No bar, parentheses. Infinities, parentheses. Okay, so now I need a test. So in this section, I'm actually going to test the number negative four because that exists over here. In between, I can test the number zero. And over here, I can test the number positive four. What do I test it in? I have to test it into the original, okay? So I'm going to take negative four squared and see if that is, in fact, less than or equal to nine. Well, that's 16. And 16 is not less than or equal to nine, which means this interval is not part of my solution. Now I'm going to test zero. I get zero is less than or equal to nine. That's true, which means that will be part of my solution. Is it the only part? I don't know. Now let's go check the other one. So I have four squared less than or equal to nine, which is positive 16. And we know positive 16 is not less than nine, which means this interval will not be part of my solution. So my only answer here is going to be um, negative three to three with the brackets. Okay, now it does want me to enter my answer in interval notation. So I'm gonna hit bracket, negative three comma three bracket. And then in the graph, I'm gonna use my brackets on negative three, the other bracket on positive three and then make sure I shade in the middle. Now 31. We have x minus five squared greater than or equal to one. Again, the first thing is to find those quote unquote zeros, right? Key numbers, which I cannot do until this is zero. So I am gonna have to minus one on both sides. Okay, and if I want to find the key numbers, I'm going to have to go over here and take this. Oops. Minus one and equal it to zero. Now how you solve that is up to you because it is already like the squares already completed. Um, I would actually solve it by extracting roots. So I get X minus five squared equal to one. And then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. But when I do that, I'm going to get plus or minus over here. And the square root of one is one. And the house goes away. So then if I add five, I'm going to get um, positive five plus or minus one. So five plus one is six and five minus one is four. And so those are my key numbers. Four would be on the left and six would be on the right. The intervals that are created are negative infinity to four. There is a bar there, so a bracket, four to six, and then six to infinity. Now I'm gonna test the intervals. Over here, I'm gonna pick zero. In between, I'm gonna pick five. And over here, I'm gonna pick seven. And so we're gonna plug them into the original. So zero minus five squared greater than or equal to one. That's negative five squared, which is 25. And 25 is greater than or equal to one. Now for the next one, five. So five minus five squared, which is zero squared, which is zero. And zero is not greater than one. So this section is not, this interval is not going to be part of my solution. And finally, the last one, 
I get two squared greater than or equal to one, which is four, and four is greater than or equal to one. So that is also a solution. So in order to tell the reader that both of those are part of my solution, we're going to use the union symbol in between. Now be sure when you type it in here that you do not use a U because it will count you wrong. Okay, this thing is not letting me type in my half and half. It's like half of a parentheses and half of a... There we go. So under sets, I want to pick the option that has a parenthesis on the left and a bracket on the right. So that would be this one. And then I'm going to click over here and I'm going to put the union symbol. And then for here, I want a bracket on the left and a parenthesis on the right. So that would be this one. And now I'm going to go back and type in everything. So I have negative. I need those symbols again, negative infinity comma four, and then over here, I'm gonna type in six comma infinity. And now that matches what's on my paper. Over here, I'm gonna have a bracket facing in that direction and a bracket facing in this direction on six, and I'm gonna shade the left side and the right side. Come on, oh, I didn't click it again. There we go. Finally, our very last one. Um, I don't think I'll be able to squeeze it on this page. So I'm gonna click over. And we have x squared minus eight x plus two less than 11. So remember it does need to be equal to zero. So I'm gonna minus 11. I get x squared minus eight x minus nine less than zero. So remember, in order to get the key numbers, I'm going to set that equal to zero and solve it. Now, this one's pretty easy to factor. Negative nine times one is negative nine. Negative nine plus one is negative eight. So the key numbers here are going to be positive nine and negative one. So when I draw them on the number line, I'm going to have a negative one and a nine. Okay. Now, let's see what the intervals look like negative infinity to negative one, and there's no bar, so parentheses, negative one to nine, and then nine to infinity. So over here, I'm gonna pick negative two. In the middle, I'm gonna pick zero. And then over here, I'm gonna pick 10. So let's see, we have negative two squared minus eight times negative two plus two less than 11. Let's see if that's true. That is going to be 22, and 22 is not less than 11, which means this interval is not part of my solution. Now we're going to try the next section. 0 squared minus 8 times 0 plus 2. I get 0 minus 0 plus 2. I get 2 is less than 11, and that's true. So this will be part of my solution. And then finally, 10. I get 100 minus 80 plus two, which is 22. And that is not less than 11. So this interval will not be part of my solution. So my solution will just be the negative one and nine with parentheses around it. So over here, I can type in negative one comma nine. And over here, I'm gonna put parentheses on negative one parentheses on nine, and then I'm going to shade in the middle. And that is the end of this review, okay? So hopefully with all of that, you should be able to work through your review. The only problem I couldn't do, I think was 25. Um, so make sure that you do go back to 25 and you actually answer that one, okay? I helped you set it up and gave you two options on what to use for A, B, and C. 
you just need to stick it into the quadratic formula and see what you get. Okay. But try your luck with number 25. And definitely you can use all of these problems um, as examples um, to work through your review problems. Okay. But that's it for our unit two review. Just to give you an idea, the test will have 15 questions, five being from the first 10 questions in the review. And then the other 22 questions, I will pick 15 from those. Okay, I'm sorry, 10 from those, okay? So your test will be in two parts. First five questions are the college level part of the test. And then the last 10 questions will be the developmental level of the test, okay? So that is it.